Good morning. In this video, we're going to be looking at the FRQ questions from the 2023 exam administration. And we're going to go over FRQ to question number one. So this is the released material from AP Bio. I love how they release the formula sheet to us as well. And here's question number one. Hopefully when you saw this, it didn't throw you for a loop because this question's not all that bad. I'm going to just read the question and uh, we'll go from there. In eukaryotic microorganisms, the PHO signaling pathway regulates the expression of certain genes. These genes, PHO target genes, encode, and so these are the genes that this signaling pathway regulates, right? Target genes. Encode, for pro encode proteins involved in regulating phosphate homeostasis. That's also important. When the level of extracellular inorganic phosphate, and it gives you that symbol, is high, a transcriptional, transcriptional activator, PHO4, is phosphorylated by a complex of two proteins, and it gives you those, that complex. As a result, the PHO target genes are not expressed. And so I'm going to stop there and, and just, we're going to go down here to this picture. So when it's high, this gene is not expressed down here. This is the gene that is, this is not expressed. Why is that? It's going to tell us. Uh, well, it says as a result, because of the this complex of two proteins, what's, what's happening is it's phosphorylated. So the inorganic phosphate is being taken out of the space or the intercellular space or wherever it is and is being added to this PHO4 gene right? Which we'll get to in a second. But what's that going to happen? I'll just say it right now. What happens to this PHO4 gene when you add a phosphate to it? Well, that phosphate's negative. It's going to cause it to change. It doesn't work anymore, right? Um, when the extracellular level of pH or of inner inorganic phosphate is low, the activity of PHO complex is inhibited by another protein, PHO81 enabling PHO4 to induce expression of these target genes, simplified model shown. So when the phosphate is low, meaning that there's not a lot of phosphate in the environment, and so why, what would need to happen? Well, we need phosphate, right? If it's high, we need to get rid of phosphate. If it's low, we need to add phosphate. And so these phosphate targeting genes are probably doing something along those lines. This PHO4 is going to cause those genes to do something, and it's going to go and do those things that those genes do. All right. To study the role of different proteins in the PHO pathway, researchers use a wild type strain of yeast. Stop there. Wild type just means something that's the most common. It is the the thing that is uh, that that has evolved. So it's the most selected for strain of yeast for this particular whatever. All right. So anytime you see that wild type, that's what you need to read. Uh, to create a strain of the mutant form. PHO81, and, and a strain with a mutant form of PHO4, which is that uh, activator molecule. Sorry, I'm having mouse issues. Um, in each of these mutant strains, researchers measured the activity of a particular enzyme, APase, which removes phosphates from substrates and is encoded for by PHO1, the target gene. Then they determined the level of PHO1 mRNA relative to that of the wild type strain, which is set to 10. And so, okay, so the question here is then, uh, or what's happening is this ATPase is going to remove phosphate from substrates, which is going to create more phosphate in there. And it's going to make mRNA, which is going to basically signal, hey, that a protein is being made, right? If there's mRNA, then you would expect that proteins are going to be made as a result of that. Let's go down. Let's look at the questions. Describe the effect of an additional, of the addition of a charged phosphate group can have on a protein that would cause the protein to become inactive. All right. And so this is simple. You do not even need any of the prompt to answer this. What's going to happen if you have a charged atom or charged molecule that's being added to a protein? It's going to cause that protein to change shape right? If a protein changes shape, it no longer functions the way that it's supposed to. You could have used language like confirmation shape change in order to decide that or to write about that. But if you just said that the addition of the negative would change the shape and that change of shape would cause the function to decrease or just completely go away, that is correct. 
Explain how a signal can be amplified during the signal transduction in a pathway such as PHO signaling pathway. So how could you amplify the signal? You could talk about uh, signal cascades is what I would do. That um, six signal cascades with secondary messengers and would amplify that signal. And so that then you would get credit for that one as well. Um, based on table one, identify the dependent variable in the researcher's experiment. And so you could do that. You could use table one. You could go back up here to the prompt and do it as well in this, you know, in this particular thing here. The dependent variable is what is being measured. Uh, what's being measured is ATPase activity. Uh, and then based on ATPase activity, the relative amount of mRNA. So the dependent variable is kind of a two-edged sword, I guess. ATPase activity is being measured, and then based upon that measurement, the relative amounts of mRNA in the cell. That is the, uh, the idea there. Calculate the percent. Uh, we're not there yet. Sorry. Back to B. Justify the researchers using wild type strain for the creation of mutant strains. Um, the wild type is going to represent the most dominant strain. And so it is going to serve as a basis of comparison. You could say that it would be used as a control. Or if you want it to be specific, you could even say a positive control because it would represent a known factor. Justify the researchers using mutant strains in which only a single component of the pathway uh, was mutated in each strain. Uh, this is simple. Um, in a controlled experiment, only one variable is measured so that you can know the effect of that variable. Part C. Based on the data in Table 1, identify the yeast strain and growth conditions that led to the highest relative amounts of PHO1 mRNA. And so this would be the wild type strain would have the most uh, growth amounts. The yeast strain with the most would be the wild type. Um, that is, that's the only thing it could be. It's, uh, I know that that is a known thing, but if they would have wanted you to um, tell you, if they would have wanted you to get the, the, you know, which one was the, you know, not the mutate or which one of the mutated ones that would have said that specifically. And so then the wild type was the correct answer. Uh, calculate the percentage change in ATPase activity in wild type yeast cells in a high P environment compared to that of wild type cells in a low P environment. Um, I had problems with this one because I feel like it's worded ambiguously. Um, I feel like it's hard to tell what it's asking you to base your comparison off of. And so, um, yeah, I had some real issues with that. And so the way that I decided to come down on this is I'm going to use, so calculate the percent change from a high to a low. And so I'm going to start with the high and go to low. And so I'm going to go 0.5. Minus 17.3. And then I'm going to divide that by 17.3. And that's going to be a negative 97% change. Um, and that is one that I'm honestly a little bit unsure of. And so I'd love to hear your comments down below, uh, how you answered this or how you read it, because this one was, um, was vague. Definitely could have been worded a lot better, particularly since they're just trying to test the skill. Like, do you know how to do percent change? And um, that could be done a lot simpler of than wording the question the way that they did. Perhaps you read it and didn't think it was worded oddly, but I uh, definitely did. All right, in a follow-up experiment, researchers created a strain of yeast with a mutation that resulted in a non-functional PHO85 protein. And so if you remember, going back to our uh, PHO5 is one of these complexes, so it's just part of that whole complex, just like PHO81 is. Uh, predict the effects 
of this mutation on PH01 expression, it would decrease the expression because a mutation on 81 decreases the expression, and so a mutation on 85 would also decrease the expression because they're all part of the same complex. And so I just gave a justification for my prediction. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, this question should not have thrown you, especially since the first two in particular are just kind of content-based, simple content-based questions that don't really require a whole lot of knowledge of what you're looking at. Part C, you do have to be able to read this table, but still, really it's just Part D that kind of makes you understand a little bit of what's going on in the picture. Um, but, you know, these um, cell signaling pathway sorts of things are here to stay. And so being able to understand what's going on in this picture and being able to read this prompt and relate it to the picture is a skill that AP Bio students are definitely going to have to continue to hone over the course of the next few years because I don't see this going anywhere. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please like the video, comment down below if it wasn't helpful or if it was helpful, and subscribe to my channel. I will be making more videos in the future. Thank you.